And now, last but not least, I'd like to introduce Samira. And those of you, many of you have seen Samira. She was on the TLC program with us. And I'm going to turn it over to her now. Hi, everyone. Thanks, Dr. Ross. Thanks, Dr. Ditsa. Thanks, everyone um, from the Women's Therapy Center and all the ladies who shared their story. Um, I'm going to abbreviate my story because it's out there on the TLC um, uh, episode. I'm sure you can find it um, on YouTube. Um, Basically, I'm from a Middle Eastern family, um, very, you know, religious immigrant parents where we didn't talk about um, sex, we didn't talk about our vagina, I wasn't allowed to touch it, I never even looked at it, it just, you know, you wiped and you went. Um, so, uh, you know, when it came to marriage, obviously I kept myself for marriage, I uh, was married to my husband for 10 months and we weren't able to consummate our marriage, I went to sex just just like everyone else said, went to sex therapists, um, gynecologists. It blew my mind. It still blows my mind till this day that a lot of doctors don't um, know it or uh, know take it as seriously as as it is. Um, so I, you know, I went through so many different therapy. Went to um, you know, I said sex therapists. Um, I was given the dilators that many of the women were given. Um, and funny story, I thought I was using them, right? Um, I didn't really understand that they weren't going inside. Um, so the first, second, third dilator, I'm like, oh yeah, I went back to the sex therapist. I'm, yeah, I'm doing, I'm on a third dilator. So then my, um, then, um, my husband at the time um, was like, oh, you know, let me see, you know, what you're doing. And I'm showing him, he's like, it's, it's not in. And I remember we had a big blowout fight that time and I was, you know, devastated. And I called the sex therapist. I told her she was <laughs> lying to me. You know, I didn't know. I was just devastated. Um, fast forward, you know, we're getting very frustrated and, um, you know, there was a lot of problems, kind of like what Adana said, there was a lot of problems in the, in the marriage as it was. So this added another layer. Um, I remember being very upset, um, trying to stay at work as long as I can. So when I came home, I didn't have to really deal with it. But of course, it was always there. Um, you know, there was a period of time I would just drive around crying and wishing the car would just flip over and end my misery, right? Um, it was really, really tough time. Um, I came across uh, the Women's Therapy Center online. And honestly, at that point, I had, I had no hope. I had no hope in them. Sorry, doctor. But I was like, there's no way. Like, they don't understand. Right. I'm the only one in the world, right, that has this. I'm just going to go so I could show my husband that I'm trying. Um, he didn't have any hope either. Um, you know, we, we just kind of went. I worked in the city. Um, we lived in Brooklyn. So it was very um, convenient, more convenient than most. Um, that it was in Long Island. And at that time, I um, asked my manager, I said, can we go out to lunch? I was like, we even went to McDonald's. I think I was just so flustered and stuff. I didn't know how to ask for that time off consistently to go to the appointments because I had to leave work early. Um, and I remember sitting with her and she was the only person I really told. Um, at that point, um, I wasn't able to tell, uh, I did I did tell my parent, uh, my father, I'm very close to my father and I was able to tell my father. Um, and the first thing he said is like, okay. And he went and talked to his uncle, like my great uncle, who's very old, who's a doctor. And he came back and he called me on the phone. And he said, you know, there's something called foreplay. And I was <laughs> like, how do I tell this man that I know what foreplay is <laughs> like? I've never talked to my father about sex. He's never talked to me about it. I, you know, did not have a good relationship with my mother. I wasn't able to talk to them. And I'm like, dad, that's not it. And he's still kind of trying to, in his uncomfortable way, describe it to me. So um, then uh, like, he's like, okay, whatever money you need to go to whatever doctor. Cause I told him about the women's therapy center. I'll give it to you. And it was like, really cute and nice, but he was just like lost. Right. And uh, so I went out to lunch with my manager and I just started crying and she was just like what is going on um we became very close she had known my husband before I got that job um uh so she knew us very well um and she said whatever time you need I will cover up for you I'll just say you know I was young at the time I didn't know that 
you didn't have to tell everyone what was going on when you'd requested time off, like it was medical. Um, and so she's like, you know, we just say you have something personal medical to deal with and that's it. And I was like, that's it. Uh, I thought I had to tell the whole office why I have to keep leaving, you know, it was a law office and everyone worked late and, you know, we went home in taxis and stuff. So, um, that was a hurdle. Uh, so in and itself, it was hard to get there. And then I would get there and me and my husband are like, this isn't going to work. You know, I, this is just our last ditch. And then we're just going to leave each other because, you know, clearly, you know, this is, this is just me. Um, we got there and, you know, uh, Dr. Ditz, uh, Ross and Dr. Ditzo were so nice. Um, you know, they gave me all the information and my husband at the time was like, huh, this might work. So one thing after the other, yes, I was one of the people who needed to be on Xanax. Um, I do have anxiety like crazy. I still do. Um, thanks COVID. I was on, uh, you know, uh, medication again, because, you know, who, who, who didn't need some um, the past 18 months. Um, but, you know, th he would pick me up from my job. We would drive. I would take half a pill of Xanax because that's all I needed. Just take the edge off and be able to work with um, the doctors. And um, I was like, after the first, you know, physical part, I was like, wow, this is this is going to work. Um, and I still started having hope. Um, and it was amazing. Like, um, it like I can't explain it. Um, the first time I had a dialer inside of me, I was like, wow, like now I understand it's inside because when I was trying before it wasn't. And um, like all those fears kind of like melted away, right? Like I had all these anxieties and fears and I couldn't get them away and, and they finally melted away. And on my 24th birthday, I think it was, the day of my 24th birthday, it was May 17th, I was able to consummate my marriage finally. Um, so anyway, fast forward uh, a couple months later, I got pregnant and, um, you know, our, our marriage fell apart. Wasn't, vaginismus was, wasn't the reason I get, um, you know, I talk to a lot of girls and women and, um, you know, they think that their maybe relationships are doomed because of it. It really isn't. And every couple will have, you know, something to work through. Um, this just happened to be another layer. Um, I'm happily married um, again. And I get a lot of questions, you know, did vaginismus come up again when, when you got married? And um, no, it did not. Um, there are times if I start to, you know, doubt myself or think, um, negatively I do see uh you know a change in me in 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 the bedroom but it's not vaginismus it it's just uh, other thoughts and um I think the biggest lesson I've learned from Dr. Ross and Dr. Ditsa is that um never think that you are the only one or never think that it's impossible like they showed me something I thought was impossible was possible um I think the biggest experience that I can bring to the table was um my upbringing um and i feel that a lot of muslim girls um they cannot talk about it you know we were raised a certain way by our parents they weren't um you know it was taboo i heard Anne marie speak to it I and mean, it's not only um unique to muslim girls right any religious uh, upbringing um unfortunately our parents didn't know any better on how to talk to us about these things and be open with us thankfully like Anne marie can be open with her daughter and i can be open with my daughter and be able to educate ourselves so that we don't have that fear and if we do we're able to combat it but my biggest thing is i love when the doctors refer someone to me and i get a phone call from someone who had the same religious upbringing and um, think like, you know, that they're the only ones in the world. And they'll tell me, yeah, I know you got cured, but I won't. I love when I hear that. I don't love it. I love it because I say, I'm, I was you. And I could talk to them and be like, I swear to God, and I'll explain to them everything they're feeling. And I love when they just like open up and say, wow, like you really do understand me you do understand where i'm coming from um i think that um connection that i've made over the years with so many women that um with from the you know who come from the women's therapy center who are reluctant to go get um therapy i like that that's the biggest thing i always look at things in life like why are, why did they happen to me this is why it happened to me right i'm able to connect with these women and i'm able to you know transcend like not only muslim women um you know hasidic jewish women uh you know like just women who are 
brought up in strict households. And it's just like a beautiful connection and the things that we are able to connect on. Um, and it all comes because of vaginismus. And like, who would have thought we're just talking about our vaginas, which we were never allowed to talk about when we were younger, right? So it, I think, um, you know, if you're on the fence of, you know, reaching out, um, just do it. If you're nervous to even talk to the doctors themselves, I don't know why I was nervous. I wish I had, you know, someone first to contact and talk to about it. Um, reach out. I know a lot of the girls on the group love um, to talk to other um, potential patients and, and people who think that they're the only ones. You're not the only one. I know it's so cliche to say that. Um, but yeah, that's my story. Um, you know, second time married. Um, it's fine. You know, great sex life. Um, you know, I've learned so much about myself, not just from uh, overcoming vaginismus, but in just connecting with other people, keeping in touch with the doctors and the women's therapy center. I'm not as active as I used to be on Facebook because my life has been kind of insane. But when I do peek in and I read these stories, it just makes me happy that there's a resource and that there's a place for these women to go and, um, you know, and, and talk to someone. I know someone in the wanting their um, partner. I've actually had women ask me if they can, if I can talk to their partners. And it, it, it's very interesting talking to a partner because they think, you know, the problem is just us or in the vagina or something. Um, it's very important for them to, you know, support you through this. Um, but if they choose not to, you know, that's, that's on them. You can do it, definitely do it on your own. Adana did it on her own. Um, but, uh, also, if you, your partner is hesitant or doesn't believe in it, they can also talk to the doctors. They can talk to someone um, who, who um, experienced this. Um, and, you know, it, it, it's, it's great hearing from other people. Um, I, I think that's all I had. Um, I think one of the things I did write something down um, when I heard um, when a doctor speak, um, I think it was, uh, I didn't want to forget. Um, Oh, Dr. Lauren said every individual is different. Every therapy is different. I think that's really, really important because yes, you're not alone, but yes, everyone's a little bit different, right? And the doctors have seen it all. I, 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 Dr. Ross, I remember you telling me a number, uh, you know, which number um, cured. Uh, there's just so many women that have been cured that um, there's so many different, you know, women and different issues that that come with it um, and different experiences um, and, and really advocate for yourself if you're on the fence um, you're shy I mean we hear about um, you know advocating for yourself in healthcare, but you need to advocate for yourself this is not for just sex this is not for just having uh, a child or or you know building a family it's it's for yourself it's for your self-esteem it's for your self-worth it's for your peace of mind um so really advocate for yourself um and um uh, and i just want to close with uh one thing till now i hate hearing because the whole time i would go to any doctor or anyone they would just tell me relax I hated that word. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of the patients hate that word. Until now, if someone says relax to me, I'm like, I am relaxed, <laughs> right? So I'm sure a lot of people who are on the fence of getting cured, if you hear that, like, I'm like, if someone tells me one more time to relax, I'm going to hurt somebody. But um, it's it's not that simple, right? So then that's why that there's this therapy, there's, um, you know, this, this program, it works. And um, I put my full faith and trust in, in these doctors' hands. And, uh, and I wouldn't be here if it wasn't, um, if it wasn't for them. Thank you again for everyone. And um, um, uh, if you haven't watched my TLC show, go ahead on, on um, just Google my name and TLC. And then you can see my whole story um, so that you can probably connect better um, with those other stories that were on here and um, the full story.